today I have for you kind of a, a product overview of a new two-way radio on the market. You call it a ham radio, uh, a scanner, a, it's a little bit of everything. It's from the company called Abri. And if that name is familiar to you, it's probably because you've seen some of their super long antennas that they offer uh, for small handheld type radios. So this is in the class of radio that I like to call the sub $50 uh, Chinese inexpensive starter radios or emergency radios. So in this group, you would have companies like Baofeng, like Quan Shen, all of those kinds of things. Some of them start out at about $25. This particular one was $46. And it has a couple of interesting features, but I think uh, really the purpose of my video is to kind of make a uh, know what you're getting into sort of thing if you're a starter or even if you're an established person. Is this really a radio that you want to try out? I just like to try out new things and this one rather intrigued me because of some of the different things that it does have. This is model number AR518 uh, and I picked this lovely color. I have no idea why, but I did. And uh, it's advertised as having 10 watts. I would be willing to bet the farm that this radio does not have 10 watts. I would be surprised if it had five uh, of power wattage. I don't have all the fancy equipment that some hams have to measure the power, but consistently for these Chinese radios that say they have uh, 10 watts or 18 watts or something ridiculous, they never do. Um, it's probably closer anywhere from three to five watts. Uh, so not a great amount of power, but certainly enough to get you through a mile or two if you were going radio to radio, and certainly good enough to hit a lot of your uh, local repeaters if you're a ham radio operator. So, so this is just so we know what we're dealing with. I'm not gonna compare this radio to a $300 Yesu or Kenwood, that would be rather pointless. Um, first of all, what you get when you order this radio is, of course, this radio. You get a, a fairly nice, flexible antenna that you can uh, take off. And if you have other antennas, uh, this is the standard, what I like to call the Baofeng antenna uh, with the end there that it comes with. So that's what you're going to get. It's it's not terrible. Uh, it's It's flexible. You also don't get very much instructions. You get one piece of paper. And that's this. And um, although it's it's not the worst instructions I've ever seen, I wouldn't call these instructions. I'm not quite sure what I would call these, but it isn't going to really help you operate this radio. I did this more or less by trial and error is how I learned to operate it. Uh, you do get a box um, with some sort of attempt to spell the word, I think it's professional, but something happened there. You do get a charging stand, which I will show you. Just the standard wall plug charging stand. You get a little, uh, you know, a lanyard there, which I, I don't ever use those. But uh, anyway, so what does this what does this radio actually receive? Uh, one of the differences uh, that I noticed, and really one of the reasons I ordered this radio, was that it receives airband. That's unusual in a radio at this price point to receive airband. I'm an airband fan. I know not everybody is, uh, but I do like it. And it actually functions fairly well. Um, it also receives FM broadcast radio. So you could listen to your uh, favorite FM stations. It receives a uh, weather band. So you can program in your uh, NOAA stations for your uh, weather. Um, and it also receives a very wide range of frequencies of a 136 to 660 megahertz, which is a lot and more than most radios do. Now, you'll see a lot of these types of radios, whether they're sold by Baofeng or by this particular company, and in the advertisements, they'll show you pictures of fire and police and try to sell you that this is some sort of public safety scanner. It is not. Unless you live in a very remote part of the United States Almost all the fire and police uh, operators and uh, systems have gone to digital, number one, and number two, encrypted. So even if you had a digital radio that could pick up them, their voices are now encrypted because let's face it, the bad guys were buying these radios and listening in. So 
And they also, you know, send them back and forth a lot of personal information like social security numbers or driver's license numbers, something that shouldn't be out on the open air bands. So don't buy any sort of radio, this one or a Baofeng, thinking that you are going to somehow hear your local police or fire calls. There's almost no radio that's made today uh, that's going to get that anymore. And it's because of encryption more than anything else. Now for ham use, if you are a, a licensed amateur radio operator at the lowest level, which is technician, you can use this radio on uh, the two meter band and the 70 centimeter band, it does do those frequencies. However, remember, if you're not a licensed ham operator, you cannot actually transmit on this radio. You certainly can listen to anything on this radio, and there's a lot to listen to. Uh, there's no restrictions about ever listening to anything that's over the public airwaves. So this radio is absolutely fine for that. Um, but you can also transmit on frequencies that should not be allowed. So you can transmit on FRS uh, frequencies, which is family radio service. Uh, it was kind of like what parents used to give their kids in the 80s before uh, we had cell phones. You know, they would hand out little radios to their kids to keep track of them across neighborhoods. Not much use anymore. There's also GMRS, which is more business radio. This will also receive and broadcast and you know transmit, which is also not allowed. Um, and it will also transmit and receive marine radio, VHF. So if you have a boat or you live close to the shore, um, you could theoretically uh, transmit on this radio, which would also not be allowed. Marine radios, of course, should meet and must meet uh, waterproof requirements that this radio does not. Um, FRS radios have to have antennas which are non-removable and it has too much power and so on. So that's not what this radio is for. It will do it. And the FCC is, is getting closer to really uh, enforcing the law on these kinds of radios when they are used out of band. Uh, and a lot of people do that. Um, if you were to say, okay, I'm gonna buy this radio just to scan, it's very slow. If you really just want a scanner to scan marine, uh, marine band and aircraft and your local ham operators on two meter and 70 centimeter, then just go buy a unit and scanner for about $100. You'll be a much happier person than this radio, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, programming this was, was challenging. If you're at all familiar with ham radios, and especially of the, of the inexpensive Chinese variety, you know that there's a program called Chirp. At least you should know that. And if you don't, Google Dan Planet Chirp. It's the programming software of choice for most of those inexpensive radios. That will not currently work on this model. They have no profile to program this. So I emailed the Abri company and I said, do you have programming software? And they sent me something that uh, was not digitally signed. So of course, every, you know, the bells went off saying, oh my God, it's got a virus. I went ahead and got my oldest PC out and downloaded it um, and scanned it. And it did not actually find a virus. I think it was just because the file was not digitally signed. I managed to slog my way through that and actually did program the radio. So you can do that. And also, if you are a ham operator, and you need to have the tones and things to open repeaters, there is no way to do it but programming. So that's something to remember. If you just wanna take this radio out and talk radio to radio, you don't have to worry about that. But if you actually wanna use it to hit your local repeater so that you can talk more long distance to other hams, you're going to have to get the programming uh, software <clears throat> it does use a standard Baofeng cable. It's got the, the Kenwood uh, connections here. So you can, I, that's what I had and I tried it and it worked. So that was not an issue with having to get another cable, especially from the Abri company. I just used the standard Baofeng cable and it worked absolutely fine. Now, a lot of the sales pitch about this radio is about something called wireless cloning, which is kind of cool but rather limited. So if you had two of these radios, let's say you bought a pair, you could do all the programming uh, via the computer 
And by holding a, a series of keystrokes, you could actually send all of that information to the other radio. Of course, once you've done that, you might as well just, uh, you know, clone the radio via your programming cable, which you could do too. But I guess if you were a business and you bought 10 of these, um, or you were a group of people and you bought a whole bunch, you could set one up and then clone, clone, clone. It would save you a little bit of time. You also can take any other radio, uh, you know, like, like a Yesu or something like that and transmit on a frequency and it can receive it and then it can program that as a channel. It's a feature that I really don't see a lot of use for, but it seems to be very exciting for the company. One other little nice feature of this radio is the fact that it does have a USB-C. This is not one of those cables where you have a 800, I think I have about a thousand of them now. This is the newer version that Apple uses and a lot of companies are going to as the eventual replacement for the big square USB ports so that you can actually recharge your radio via USB-C. So that is kind of a nice feature. So let's turn it on and you'll quickly see another fairly nice feature of this radio and that's the screen. The screen is really big. It only does give you one line of text. So, uh, and you can't see both the channel and the frequency, which I don't like too much. And you also can't rename the channels. So you'd have no choice but to call your channels 0102 and you have up to 128 channels that you can store, very much like a standard Baofeng. I would guess if you were to break this open, you would probably see that pretty much at the, at the circuit level, it's probably that sort of radio design. You can display the frequency by, by changing um, in the menu, you can go through here and change it to frequency mode and then um, you will see here, it will show you a frequency instead of showing you the channel. Um, but in order to use your program channels, you can't see the frequency. So you kind of have to memorize those channels that you've programmed to say, well, okay, channel 45 is really this particular repeater um, that I'm using. Um, it does, it's a very nice radio to use at night, of course, being that nice big display. And you can make the display a little dimmer. I have it on full brightness right now. The The battery life seems quite good on this radio. I don't, haven't seen any issues with that um, at all. And it has uh, some nice shortcut buttons. Like for example, um, if I go back here and I reset it to... Um, the, the channel mode, and you'll see that it goes back. We don't want to do that. We want to go back to channel mode, and um, it's now back to channel mode. And you can hit one button scan. Just hit that one button, and it begins scanning through your channels. And then now you see how slow a scanner this is. It's really slow, trust me. Uh, I actually think it's slower than some of the Baofengs that I actually have played with. Um, and so you are just not going to get that kind of performance that you would even out of a unit and dedicated scanner is about literally a hundred times as fast as this is in scanning through channels. That's why I don't recommend that this would be some kind of nifty um, kind of scanner for you to have. Uh, you would be very frustrated. Um, it's, not a bad radio for kind of an emergency use. If you live in an area like I do where we have hurricanes quite frequently, a radio like this can be very valuable as cell phones um, die out. I would recommend you honestly can get your, your technician level ham radio, amateur radio license. It's not that terrible to do. It actually at this current time does not cost anything either. Um, you can get that license from the FCC. You have to pass a test. You do not have to learn Morse code. Um, the test bank is out there. You can study the test bank or however. I would recommend you get licensed. But even as a listening thing, you can listen to things if all of the other things. And of course, our world situation now is a bit, uh, let's say, tense. Um, this can also be a handy radio to have for emergencies to monitor communications. Like we have hurricane nets that provide good information. Of course, you have a radio, remember too here. So you have a nice FM radio, if nothing else. And I'll 
uh, demonstrate that real quick for you. And this is a Miami station and it comes in quite nicely. So um, you've got that, which is also good for emergencies. It's amazing today how many people don't even have a battery operated um, FM or AM radio anymore. Uh, I always am loaning them out when a hurricane approaches because I have a, a little bit of a collection and I was like, wow, don't you people have a radio? So you do have that then if this, if nothing else. And of course, you have your, your NOAA weather that you can program in, whatever NOAA weather if that's available, which it is over most of the country. I mean, I'm sure there's a few spots where they don't reach, but um, by and large, I can do a little demo of that real quick. Here. Uh, you're, you're nice. Two to three feet. You're nice NOAA weather, which is good for weather alerts and things. It doesn't go off automatically. Like you're not going to, uh, the wait, the radio will not turn itself on if there's suddenly a tornado uh, warning issued for your area. That's not this kind of radio for that use. So would I recommend it to someone? Probably not. I would, if you really don't have much money to spend on a radio for emergency purposes, I would tell you to get a Baofeng because mostly because around the software and the fact that you have actually a dual view screen, you can actually look at two frequencies at once and you can switch between frequency and you can actually name your channel. So instead of this being channel 49, it could be NOAA, I could call it NOAA, and I would know what it is better than channel 49. I think that's probably my biggest ding on the radio. But then again, it has airband. So if you like airband, um, none of the Baofengs have airband that I've ever seen unless they come out with one. Also, uh, notice that the keys are backlit too, which is nice for uh, night use. And of course, the screen, um, I think you wouldn't even have to put on your reading glasses to see that one. Um, it's not bad. So it's got it's got good volume. That's not an issue with the radio. It's got a couple of function buttons here that you can program in. And of course, this is the transmit key um, and so on. So I think, I think that's basically it. Uh, I did not find any other reviews of this radio yet. So I hope this helps in your uh, decision either to buy or not to buy. Um, you have at least my take on this radio. I don't regret my purchase, you know, 46 bucks. What are you going to do with that? Um, it's just another radio. It's actually very lightweight. So I might actually end up being my, my carry radio that I have in my backpack. Um, I almost try to have this with me. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, not for the absolute beginner, but if you wanted to just another one for the collection, not terrible. I hope this has helped you evaluate this radio and whether or not you want to purchase it. Thanks for watching.